Hey there, welcome back. Today we're gonna to take a look at rope ascent, and I'm gonna look at more of a modern technique for rope ascent. The old traditional technique for ascending ropes in an alpine environment uh, involved the use of friction knots, most commonly uh, prussic hitches, um, to send the rope. And that's a really great and valuable skill. And uh, there are times when that's probably the most effective means. Um, and certainly they're lightweight and they tend to work reasonably well on icy ropes. But these days, a lot of times I'm um, traveling on a glacier with a micro traction. And I may already have that micro traction rigged on my harness off of my belay loop. So in this situation, we're simulating a crevasse fall, so you're gonna have to ignore this obvious granitic environment here in Yosemite. And imagine ice and snow walls, this being an icy snowy wall of a crevasse. And I am clipped in to an overhand on a bite, which is a totally acceptable way to attach to glacier travel rope. You don't have to have a butterfly. And I have a triple action carabiner, in this case a magnetron, black diamond magnetron. And then right above that, I have this micro traction rigged. Okay? And this micro traction is rigged without the teeth engaged. So the device is open. So what's catching me is this knot being jammed into that device. So I'm not being caught on the teeth of the micro traction should I fall into a crevasse. Now the system that I'm using here, I don't have a pre-rigged friction hitch with um, leg loops hanging. And typically in summer season in the Northwest um, or in uh, you know parts of British Columbia where there's a melt freeze snowpack, I won't climb or I won't travel on Glacier with the pre-rigged friction hitch because one of the number one causes of crevasse fall is slipping and tripping. And I wanna reduce the tripping hazard. So in this case, I've gotten really unlucky. I didn't trip and fall in a crevasse, but I fell in anyway and I'm gonna to need to rig that. So I've got a few resources on my harness and very few. I was doing a technical route in this case, and so I do have an ATC I could use if I wanted. I'm uh, probably not gonna use that. I have a single length runner. That's sometimes useful for running protection or clipping ice screws if you have pitches of ice climbing. I've got a double length runner, and I have a friction hitch that's a, normally used as a backup for my ATC. So this is nice because it's not that long. I don't have to carry a really long friction hitch like you would for a waist prussic or a foot prussic, so it's less of a tripping hazard. So with these resources, all I have to do is attach any type of friction hitch above. So in this case, I'm just gonna do an auto block because the auto block is easy to do with gloves on. And if you wrap it enough, it still works quite well on skinny ropes or on icy ropes. So you just wrap it until it's all used up and then clip that locker into there. Little quick tip, I have a clove hitch in there and that isolates the knot that joins this into a loop and that makes it a little easier to set this up. Okay, so now I've got my auto block on there. I'm just gonna slide that up. It's another nice thing about the auto block is it slides pretty well. Okay, now I'm gonna take my double length runner. You can use that little quick tip again. I can make a clove hitch right there to isolate the sew bar. So it doesn't interfere with anything else I'm gonna do. This is a locking carabiner. It doesn't have to be locked. Your life is down here. You can lock it, it's up to you. Okay, and now this is my foot loop. Now I wanna get rid of my backpack. That could be the first thing I do. It could be the last thing I do. It depends how uncomfortable I am. Backpack, I'm gonna take my single length runner and I'm just gonna find the shoulder strap and I'm gonna to try to sling high on the shoulder strap here, okay? And this is sort of a summit pack. It's not like an expedition pack. So I'm not really worried about having it hang off of a shoulder strap. Okay, so now I can take this off and clip that into my belay loop right here at the bottom, underneath everything, so it's not gonna get pinched. Okay. Slide that on up, my shoulder strap, so it cinches at the top. Okay. Cool, so now that's gonna hang down and beneath me Well, I ascend this rope so I can stick my foot into here, slide that up as high as it's comfortable for me to stand up in it. Now I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna grab this knot here and I'm gonna find the button. So there's a button on this device, maybe you can see it there. I'm gonna press that, now the teeth are engaged and now I pull up, okay? Pulling up on that device. Nice thing is I don't have to come out. So I'm backed up with the rope, so should this device fail, I'm gonna be caught on that knot there. Okay, and all I have to do is continue to grab in that loop and pull, and you'll see it's a very fast, efficient system for climbing a rope. 
And a lot of times I'll just do this until I get to the lip of the crevasse. Okay. So once I'm at the lip, I'll take that other locking carabiner and put it on there. And I'll typically back myself up with a clove hitch, or you could do an overhand and a bite or any bite knot and clip that in just to make sure that if something were to fail, like this jams into some ice and starts to slip, or somehow this were to become disengaged, I'm not gonna fall all that distance down to that knot. I'm gonna fall just to this back up here, okay? And then I'll just continue on up, and if I need to adjust my back up, then I can simply pull through on the clove hitch and then cinch it down. And you can check out, check out our clove hitch video to see how to do that. But this is more of a modern way of ascending a rope. It's very efficient, it takes very little effort, and your backpack comes up with you, provided it's not a monster expedition pack. Usually I could do this with packs up to around 40 pounds, but I wouldn't want to go much more than that.